Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for dino tamer yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners allies head face weapon <laughs> and also rings and food emblems flasks so on so on. everything there is in the gear uh, page we are going to go over that one as well then we are going to cover gems mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems of course we're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones or the big gems that is and then for lastly of course as you can see right here on the screen we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree as i basically call it so that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched, you can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, let's take a deeper dive into the Dino Tamer, starting out with the abilities. You probably saw some of them a little bit in the demo, but let's cover them right here. It's just a little bit of a deeper dive into it. So the uh, Dino Tamer uh, has the ability when it throws down the clever, or I'm not sure if it's called clever snare, but it basically is the net it throws down. I call it the net because it looks like a net, right? <laughs> well, it kind of looks like something different when I do like this. It kind of looks like something different because of the skin, but it is a net you throw down. And when that basically kills something, uh, or when it basically applies a damage over time, like a poison, it doesn't say a poison, but I always kind of felt like it was a poison, but it's a damage over time effect. And when, if it, when it's affected by that, it doesn't have to die from the damage over time. It just has to die while the damage over time was uh, on the enemy. It will recall, uh, get the cooldowns down of your little uh, dino buddies or uh, not Draco buddies, but Dino buddies, that's some very different thing. So that's basically it. So there's not really a damage over time. I wish that they would, uh, if they ever reworked the Dino Tamer, I wish there was the damage over time ability was on the ultra attacks, but uh, it maybe would, it's a little bit much too like the Solaria now, but I do like the damage over time thing that they do have it. So the net uh, applies again, uh, a damage over time. And, and the more you hold down the button, the larger just the uh, basically the blanket here or the net is going to be so if i just throw it here you can see it's very very small but if i hold it and it starts spinning you can see it spins spins faster and faster now it's the maximum spin and that's going to give you the largest net as well so you have a bigger range on that but you don't really need to throw it that long it becomes pretty big still you can see that's the that's just kind of like, like the average size because see that's pretty if you hit the enemies again it applies it and then you kill them uh, we'll have that then it uh, resets the cooldown on your dino buddies also dino buddy is the name of it but yeah that's also what i usually call them but what you basically do is that then you can throw down this one it kind of summons a little thing and then it summons a dino that's going to last for 22 seconds in size right here 22 seconds so they're basically it so basically you attack and you go in you throw down your net they die from the uh, poison thingy and then they you can use your uh, ability again and then it's going to summon one out of three of these dino buddies as well as dino buddies there's one like kind of a tank and then there's like a like, it, i wouldn't call it range dps like that but sort of there's two dps's just so i guess i guess this is easier to say there's two dps's and one tank and i really don't know which one is which i, I know that the raptor guy is sort of the dps and then the kind of yeah but it doesn't really matter. They 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 do the same the same damage. There's not really a change. But they do have a special ability that do other things, and then one of them taunts basically. But uh, it's not really a big deal. I don't want to go too much into to that. I just but there is three different ones. That's just so you know. There I can throw down this one. See if I get it or something else. Yeah. So this is I know this is my skin, but uh, this is basically what it would be for me. That would be the the tank basically if you have this pool skin. But uh, it doesn't really matter which one it is. They all do the same damage, but they do have special abilities. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyways, where it really comes in with the damage is of course our little mount here, uh, as it's called, and this is of course our. Uh, ultimate as you can see you're shooting uh, or acid spit as it actually is and when you do that as well you can still throw your net down but you can also also still summon uh, these guys here but as you probably saw uh, it resets as well i'll show you guys that in a little bit when the cooldown is over but you run around and you do a ton of damage and you also get movement speed uh, if you see right here uh, you get movement speed to you increase your magic damage also splash effect to your darts so when it says darts is because i'm shooting darts basically like tranquilizing darts i guess but they're gonna get a splash effect as well and yeah you just uh you know uh, do uh, everything enhances basically so if i show you right here so i throw down my you can see that's on cooldown then i will jump on my uh, this one and actually resets that so it's a different cooldown and you can see that one is there so you can basically have two of these up without actually throwing any of the nets down and then of course you can throw down the net you can see it becomes um very large uh, very much faster you can see it's already at max um height or why what i know with with that's what it's called yeah and then then you can just cancel again just just a little reminder uh you can cancel your ultimate if you wanted you to hit it once again so i'll show you guys that one more time you can see right here there's a little trick you can see i'm now i'm on my mount and i'm gonna jump into here 
uh, I have I'm on you know the ultimate and then when I uh, didn't jump out of my uh, ultimate again you can see now I'm still on my mount so it saves the last thing you was on so it saves your mount uh, so you can basically run around on your mount then jump into that forum and then when you get out of that forum you are gonna be on your mount so that's a little bit of a trick uh, to it they can be on your mount at the same time so yeah just a little little trick with that so that's basically all the abilities it's just some really very crazy uh, abilities it's just some of these when you throw down that but most of the time you are going to be in your dino form that's also why the ultimate and uh, sort of the class gym is necessary as well but that's the abilities let's talk about stats before we head into uh you know the subclass we are a magic damage user and um, you know the dino tamer is one of the fastest classes out there it has become more favoritous than favoritous favorite uh, than the uh, neo ninja is so if i go in here oh that's the wrong one button if you go into neo ninja of course uh, is one of the most fastest classes there's in uh but the dino tamer is sort of the same in the, some ways um it's a lot it's just as fast like you can probably get the dino tamer to be faster than the neo ninja or the neo ninja's other ways around but it really comes down to play style in that sense but i feel like more people are favored towards the dino tamer because it's just more simple and i guess it's just a little bit easier to do this one ins instead of the neo ninja so in what i've seen at least i feel like people are going towards more of the uh, dino tamer so it is a magic damage user uh, it's a speed runner a speed farmer that's more like it it can also do nice damage to bosses for sure but there's also classes that just have shined a little bit more and you would probably cater to much much more uh, towards this one so having this as your speed farmer and then have one in like for example the ice age as your you know boss killer that's very nice to just have these two instead of having two sets of gems or uh, sets of items uh, gear lying in your bags or in your you know personal storage it's just much easier to have two different classes that are doing this much do better bossing and this much do better uh, you know farming in that sense but yeah like i said magic damage user and that's basically it because you don't need energy regen on this class you can see we have zero here but i do have a base as you can see right here that's why we don't need it there's nothing in here as well either on the little circle down there but I, if I did, you know, need or if I could use energy region on the Dino Tamer, that's also maybe why people favor it a little bit more because it's not reliant on those. It's just reliant on, you know, movement speed. And uh, so, of course, the Neo Ninja needs movement speed as well, but it also has like a resource, resource management uh, problem, of course, or issues <laughs> with, of course, the energy region. But of course, the uh, Dino Tamer do not need that. But if I was actually to use energy region, of course, the base would be in there. But since I can't, it's actually there exactly zero. The same with the max energy because it, can, it doesn't use that at all. Of course, we got a little bit of attack speed. We got a little bit of movement speed right here. Uh, crit hit, you want to get to that 100%. Uh, so 31 percent too much on this guy here but it's good to be a little bit over than a little bit under and i'm not meaning a little bit over with 30 percent but if you're like one two percent over it's okay it's also okay uh, two one two percent under just evaluate what you are sacrificing to either gain those two critical hits or what you are also sacrificing to lose those two percent critical hits so it's not really a science in that sense where it's like or like a straight science to say hey yes you need to only have you know uh, crit hit on your ring and crit hit you have to manage you have to balance it and get to closest as 100 as you can and like i said a couple of percentage order is also fine if you're not if you have to have sacrifice like let's say a hundred thousand as also over over doing it but a hundred thousand uh, magic damage in for two percent then then keep the two uh, be two percent under the 100 percent and gain that 100,000 magic damage, for example. That's just fine, but balance two more that 100%. And then a critical damage, you wanna get as much as you can of that. And then of course the light, you also wanna get as much light as you can as well. So as much as you can with the critical damage, the light and the magic damage, and then balance that 100% critical hit. And if you are going to this be your bossing character, then you wanna go more into attack speed. But if you are going to use this as your farming class, you want to go for that movement speed. Movement speed is always kind of versus attack speed. Those are always like kind of clinching together. So either you pick movement speed if you're a farmer or you pick attack speed if you are a bosser. That's sort of just the most straight answer I can give, I guess, in that sort of regards. But 
we are going to talk about the gear right now we are going to go talk to my hat here a little hatty talk here so i went with the movement speed the critical damage on your gear uh, any items you always want critical damage critical damage is so much better than anything else except if you have very low critical hit then of course critical damage do not benefit you that much but you are going to, you can see I have 131% and so I should take off a lot of it. I don't even think, I'm, oh, I do have a critical hit ring actually, so I could actually take this one off, but it wouldn't be much it would take. I would still be 27% over, so that's really not a big deal. The most of it comes from our, from my gems and such. And of course the gems are maxed out. They're not uh, maxed out on the percentages. Um, and they might also be not 100% on the extra boosts and stuff, but uh, they all have critical hit and I should definitely go out from some of that but you've seen maybe some of my other videos where I also have a lot of critical hit and it's just because you get so much from just you know having level 25 gems and these are again only stellar ones and you are going to get even more getting up to crystal I think you can hit like 200% extra critical hit uh, that doesn't mean you are double critting <laughs> it just means that you are 100% over what you need so I'm pretty sure you can get that from um, just play around with your gems if you want that but 100% uh, is uh, enough to uh, do so but that's our uh, helmet or our hat uh again, i went with the movement speed the magic damage uh, or sorry the magic damage a magic find you can use that whatever you want if you want to go with some max health instead that's fine but magic find is a good uh, place to start it's only 140 around that but yeah uh, since we have death defying you don't really need them health but that's really up to you but again the movement speed is a requirement if you are going uh you know speed farming which usually people are but the critical damage is just something you absolutely need then we got the gun here and we are going with the attack speed you can also again go with the movement speed if you want it to and then you got the magic find uh, and then you want the critical damage again you can get some critical hit here if you are looking for that if you want to you're not close to that 100 percent but um i would again go with the uh, movement speed here and then get critical damage uh, down there of course as always and then uh, magic find is really up to you again what you want there's not really other options to be honest i wish there was other options but there is not if i could get movement speed and attack speed i would get that i would 100 percent get that i would always take uh you know movement speed over magic find if i could as well and then we got your face Again, I made the movement speed and then we got the magic damage. That is sort of, you can't not change that. Or you, you, of course you can change it, but I wouldn't change it because magic damage is so much better. If I could get triple uh, magic damage, I would. <laughs> but uh, critical damage again, you can see critical damage, critical damage, critical damage. And then with the face, you need the magic damage as well. The movement speed, again, you can go with either attack speed or movement speed if you want to do so. But you do want to go with the magic damage and the critical damage always on the face and then well like i said critical damage is just it's so good it's just so good when you hit uh, over or at least when you hit that exactly 100 that's when it's really really good then we got of course a ring here uh with magic damage and light you want to get yourself a crystal ring the third stat is really up to you uh, i would try to get maybe a critical hit ring and play around with the critical hit because when you are starting to remove some of these uh, critical hit it can be kind of hard to hit that 100 so with a ring you can change that pretty quickly and put in another ring and if you're way over still you can use another ring and it's always okay, okay to go down a few levels uh, I wouldn't say go all the way to a level one if you have a level four ring, but because it doesn't really matter that much with the third stat, even if you are over, because right here we're talking about how much magic damage and light you get out of a crystal one ring to a crystal four ring, and you just get so much out of the uh, crystal four ring. So if you have a level one ring, versus a level four ring go with the level four ring no matter what like the hidden effects are or what the critical hit is depending if it's your main your dynatamer is your main then you of course you want to min max that and get like a real a really good one that has four but if you're if you're just a, like a farming character and you're just farming you 11 with it or something like that then you should not really look it's fine to have a level one ring uh if it kind of benefits that but maybe a level four ring would just be better no matter what the stat is because you just get so much magic damage out of it if it's your main you can go with like a level three ring you know that's not a big difference from three to four so and that kind of just becomes more efficient or what is it called important or different definition into the of course the third stat right there for the banner we want to use crystal 
uh, not crystal ring. <laughs> we want, of course, a U10 banner. We want to do 10 banner right here. That's the, what we want right here. And you just want to go with the one that, of course, give magic damage. The other stats don't really matter because they're always going to be the same. Well, the second stat is going to be with the light, right? And that's what we really want it for. So the third and the fourth stat, you can go with whatever you want. Maybe if you want to go with some uh, flash charges or maybe you want to go with some movement speed. That could also be really nice. It's really up to you. Again, speed farming, movement speed, really, really nice. So go with whatever you have. But again, you just want to get that your 10 better. That's all that really is to it. Then we go into the ally. And here is a little bit of a difference because it, the perfect ally is a little bit hard to get because you want the one from the star chart. As you can see here, we want that flavor text that says increases cooldown recovery speed by 25%. And there is another one on the star chart. And this is the one you really want. There is also these two here. Uh, you can also go with this one, for example, the Orchion here, because it does have the 25. It's 5% more magic damage, and it's also 200 more light, or sorry, 100 more light, uh, which is not a lot, but it actually does count towards it. You want the extra light, and you do want the extra uh magic damage as well from this one here but the thing is we want that flavor text of the increases cooldown recovery of 25 percent and you can get this one right here but it is from the star chart and it this is the best one because you want that cooldown so we have our ultimate up as much as we can uh, and then as you can see here if i jump in here you can see this is kind of the cooldown there is on it it goes pretty slow uh, actually having it here right here but of course having the class gym and having this one because it's going to be the same cover cooldown reduction this is what it's going to be so i could do if we see when the, basically this one goes out um we can show you how much it's going to be so i'm going to take off my class gym here and i'm also going to take off um also going to take something else i'm just going to take this one right here just because that is it and then it's going to just going to wait and now we can jump into our ultimate uh, so what the class gem does is it just increases how long you are on your mount so it doesn't take off any of the cooldown but you are basically more on your mount because this increases the duration of it you can see now i'm already on my you know regular mount right and see it's not even half done with, uh, with this one as well so it, it does have a lot of uh, in, uh, you know complications that's why I'm, I'm not going with this one but i'm going with the puck instead and this is pretty easy to come by to get this one here star chart is a lot harder to come by but if you have access to this one it does really make a big difference and the the, the cooldown recovery is just so important uh, for having this one so you have it up all the time we can you can basically see it now that now the cooldown is going down a little bit faster and we're going to stay on my my ultimate uh, mount as well for a bunch of time so that kind of leads us into our emblems and our flask we are going to go with the death defying you can go with a few other if you want to do so especially if you're farming uh, this one if you are you have a chance so if you don't have a hundred percent crit hit you don't have a like a not a hundred percent chance to get one but you have a fully chance of getting a chance to get one of these right <laughs> so if you don't have a hundred percent it's even harder to get flash charges back on this one but if you do have a bunch of magic find eight thousand plus or something like that you are going to uh consistently recover charges when you hit that magic find trigger it does have a pretty high proc chance but you do need also quite a lot of magic find to have it this proc as well so the death defying is just too easy to uh, to get and you get a nice amount of flash charges with it and it automatically doesn't kill you when you are basically going to take fatal damage right so it's just very nice and you can just farm and keep going but if you really want to you know have your ultimate up all the time recover it amazing and then maybe you want to go with the band or you want to go with the one that actually gets you critical hit but that's more of an in-game sort of thing if you want to get all that back so you really don't need that for just farming i would just recommend the death defying and just not have that headache of actually maybe dying sometimes of course when you run out of charges you are going to die or there's a few mechanics that can or if you bug out you can also sometimes die but it happens very rarely and like i said there are some one shot mechanics out there which actually some of the leviathans so keep that in mind when you are farming all of these but if i is very nice and you get like i said again a bunch of uh flash torture but more importantly we want to talk about the emblems you want to go with the arcane the arcane and the martial emblems are just two best emblems there is in the game so if you are a magic damage user you want to use the 250 percent of course with the arcane and the other one if you are a physical damage character but we are going to use the arcane of course for the 250 for three seconds it's only three seconds but it's just 
so much damage when you get it. I can actually show you right here. You can see my damage is almost, I would say three and a half uh, thousand. And when I use this one, I'm almost a million damage. Uh, well, it calculates in some, some dumb other things and stuff like do more, but you have a, I almost have a million magic damage for just uh, for that one. So it is very, very, very significant to have that one in there as well. So the Arcana, the Martial Emblem is just something you always want to use. Then you can use the Chronomantic Cubesly uh, or Chronomantic uh, Emblem here that uh, recovers all your cooldowns, all your ultimate ability. So when you use a flask, it covers down the ultimate. So you can go with some other, uh, you know, uh, thing here if you're actually going to use a bunch of flask because you can't do a trick with it. You should play around with it and then maybe go with another, uh, you know, ally maybe go with the orchin um, because then you don't have the cooldown reduction but if you use your flask properly like all the time as soon as you know you don't have the effect of this one then this will of course get it all the way down so we can actually just play around with it a little bit you can see here if I jump into my ultimate here then I can use one of these I wait until the little uh, effect on is gone and I can do it again and then it's gone again and now we can use it again and we're waiting for the effect because that's a three second that is oh now and it's up and ready and again so we can see it is going to prolong as of right there as well but it takes about four flasks to get around to that one so just keep that in mind as well and you can use a little bit less if you are using the puck or the one from the star chart this stary stary thumbing <laughs> the sky fire right here so if you do have access to the Skyfire, I would recommend doing this one, but it's really up to you because there's no difference to the Orchin or this one except for the flavor text. And yes, it does give you a movement speed boost, but um, maybe the cooldown is just better if you want to, to go with that one. But that's really up to you. However, if you are bossing, you're going to use much more flask, but if you are just farming around, then in that one. You can also look for some of the other ones. Uh, you could go with the Bountiful if you want to do so. That's a nice option as well. There's, of course, the Sure Strike when you're not 100% critical hit. Like 80% and above, you want to switch to something else than the Sure Strike. But if you are lower than 80%, you can use the Sure Strike just to get it at 20% extra. It is for 10 seconds, which is really, really nice. But uh, it's only 20%, so it's not guaranteed, but yeah, it's still something as well. You can also go with the invulnerability one, the unwielding one, if you want to do so. That does give you a brief shields that will actually help you not take as much damage. Uh, and you won't like lose all your ability or oh, sorry all your flash charges if you are just getting hit uh, that much and there's also trailblazing of course I for almost forgot to talk about this one you could use the trailblazing as well uh, if you are uh, you know uh, running around and actually if, uh, speed farming with this guy then you could definitely go with the uh, the trailblazing instead of the chronomantic um if you, if you want to, uh, you know, have that extra movement speed and extra, extra boost to put jumps as well, that's also really, really, really nice. So now we covered all the flask. We forgot, of course, our little uh, subclass here, uh, but let's not cover, let's not forget that one. Subclasses, you can go with any subclass you really want. I would suggest you go with either the um, knight. I usually recommend knight for most uh, magic damage users because flash charges is so, so good. And you can also go with the Lunar Lancer, but the thing is to give you 750 physical damage. Not that that's why we're taking it, but I just recommend, um, you know, Lunar Lancer uh, more to physical damage characters, characters than I do to magic ones. But I also recommend the Knight for physical damage characters. The Knight is just an all-round all very, very nice uh, one as well. But again, you can go with any subclass you want. Maybe the Lunar, uh, sorry, not the Lunar Lancer, but the Solarian as well. The Solarian is pretty nice as well. But the thing is that it can be a little bit hard to come by. But the explosion that it does uh, with a top of the Dino Tamer as well is just amazing. And uh, I, there's a lot of people that do use it, but I don't recommend it very much. But only because, only because the Salarian is pretty hard. It's a new class, uh, but and also it's kind of hard to get. If you don't buy it, of course, that one. The same thing goes with the Bard and the Vanguardian and stuff like that. So I don't recommend it that much. But if you have access, if you have a level 30 Solarian that has a decent power rank, I would recommend this one any time of the day in instead of the uh, Knight. But the Knight is just so easy to get uh, compared to Solarian. So that's why I don't want to recommend the 1% 
basically I'd rather cater to the 99% of what people are looking at these videos actually. But I might get comments on why did you not recommend the Solarian? Well, now I have. So just keep that in mind that I did recommend the Solarian if you have access to it and you have it at a decent one. I'm still using the Nike because I just like it more and again, it's not my main, but Solarian is absolutely amazing for the both the bossing on the uh, Dino Tamer, but also for uh, speed farming as well. But just wanted to mention that, but I don't want to recommend it because it's hard. When If it was super easy to come by, if it was just as easy as the night, then it was a slam dunk, of course. It would just be, a, or just at least a little bit easier to, to get. But that's enough about the, the subclasses. Just go with the night if you have that one level up, or go with anything that is the most level or the most power rank. Especially the levels are very, very nice. So uh, whatever is li uh, highest level, just go with that until you can get the night, Lunar Lancer, maybe the... Uh, you know, the Solarian, if you have that one. But let's talk about gems before we are heading out of here. So first of all, we're gonna get Dino Time. It's time for Dino Time. So as it does, it doesn't uh, lower the cooldown on the uh, on your, you know, ultimate. What it does is that increase the duration that you're on your mount and also increases the attack speed, which is really nice. Usually uh, sub, uh, not subclasses, but class gems, do basically just one thing most of the time, you know, just hey, increase the duration or something like. Sometimes they don't do very much the class gems, but these actually do two things where it actually increases the attack speed, which is really nice. So you can go for more movement speed and still feel like you're shooting really, really fast. And of course, the just the what we really wanted for is decreased duration, so we can stay on the mount as we want more here. But as you can see from the kind of little test I did, you can actually have this up all the time if you do use the chronomantic uh, trick there with like potions and stuff like that. Then you go with something else. I don't really know what you would go for. You could go for a pyro disc if you want to do so, or you definitely also want a explosive. So I don't have an explosion here, uh, but you want to go with the explosive one and you want to go with a pyro disc as well. Pyro disc is not because we arranged, but it just gives movement speed and it's just very nice for speed farming. If you are not speed farming, maybe a stinging curse is something that's very nice. The explosive is not that great uh, when you basically are killing bosses because the explosive that what it does is that when you have one enemy die, it makes an explosion and that may sometimes change reacts, or at least it does damage to other ones, but it can't chain react. So it's kind of like, hey, everything is just exploding. Everything is just dying. But that's more for speed farming. If you want to go with that, you can go with anything you really want in, in the gems, but a stinging curse could be something you really want. Um, you can also go with this one because it does increase the, the speed with your projectiles, but it, it doesn't do anything besides that, but for bossing, there's not really any many gems in the in the yellow, the blue, and the red that really matters. But the stat you want on your gems is, of course, magic damage, critical damage, and crit hit if you need it, or you, you can basically change it to flat health, or you can just keep it at the critical hit. That's also fine. Uh, we could go with some more, uh, you know, health if you want to do so, but it, since we have, you know, our death defying, which is going to save us, we really don't need to be tanky, we just need to be glass cannon, but that's really up to you, whatever you want. Um, but you want magic damage and you want critical damage. That is on all of them, you shouldn't change that. And all the extra little boost, you get a little 5, 10, and 15, you want to move those into either magic damage or critical damage. You never want them on the critical hit or any of the flat health or max health percentage, all that. You just want to have it all in damage, damage, damage. But what is more interesting is, of course, our cosmic gems. Here you want, of course, magic damage and critical damage. Uh, and uh, the light, you cannot change that, but you want uh, magic damage and critical damage. That's what you want on your uh, gems. And again, the boosts on these ones, you want to get them all into light, all into light. The same thing with the big one, all into light, and you're going to want magic damage and critical damage on it. And then put all the boosts into light. But you don't want the flower power. It's very nice. Flower power is a very nice word, but it don't, it's not a very nice gem. Here you want the battle berserker. You could go with the vampiric a little bit if you want to. Sure, uh, if you're speed farming, it's not that. But again, even if you're speed farming, I would go with the battler. The battler is just so much better because of the attack speed and also the increased light you get. So sure, the vampiric, if you have that one, if it's not your main, this is not my main character, of course. Uh, so I can go with the flower. Uh, but if I really wanted to go with one, I just go with the battle berserker. It's just so much better than anything else that we got. So. Go with that one, the Vampiric do help you with a little bit of healing and stuff like that, but we have to find again, but it's really up to you, but you want to go with the Battle 
uh, Berserker, that's the one you want to go with, or the battle, Berserker Battler, that's the one you want to go right here, and that's one just because of the attack speed and the increased light. So, we covered everything there is with the class, we covered all the gear, we covered all the abilities, the subclass, the flash, the emblems, uh, I guess the food, <laughs> you want to get some food right there, and then we covered all our, our gems again, you want to go with the magic damage and the critical damage on all of them to max out your damage as well and again I, I went a little bit like i said a little bit with attack speed i do have attack speed on one but this is my attack speed uh right here just from having the all the dragons and such so yeah just letting you know that this is the attack speed i do have without actually boosting my attack speed so yeah yeah and i also you also get again more um, attack speed if you do have the ultimate so that's it's not don't go with the gem but yeah the, this really doesn't do very much indeed but that's it for the uh, dino tamer uh but we're not done yet we still need our star chart for magic damage which is coming up right here all right first up we got the magic damage tree i sort of gave them all names and this is the magic damage path as i call it and out here is where there's red circles this is where there is going to be some new white want to get really old you know those that you really want to go for the green ones are okay but kind of there's not really anything between them there is a little bit down here but there's really nothing between them. these two over here are red because uh, there's two great good notes over here and could be a path that you want to go after you go through the basically the magic damage part and then also the critical damage part as well and you really want to go down here because there's also like a 15 damage right down here in the bottom if you can see it right down there there's a 15 percent magic damage winch is pretty crazy as well because you do have to go out either this way or this way after uh, over here is the uh, magic find and the kind of the uh, magic find an XP path and uh, that's okay as well uh, you do need those you know XP for if you're leveling up or doing Paragon and stuff like that but the red ones are sort of mandatory for a uh, magic damage you can go whatever you want if you want to do so but uh, these are definitely the notes that increases and has some impact as a magic damage user so as you can see you can you can also pause the video if you want to and just kind of check all the things out if you want to do so which ones are you going to go for and which ones are pretty nice to have but it's not really a lot of good notes leading up to it so if you had let's say you had you could get all the notes or at least everything all the green ones and all the red ones then you should definitely also go for the green ones as well the green one up here has some magic not sorry magic attack speed that's why it's up here usually not many uh, you know uh, magic damage users like for example dragonlight don't use uh, you know attack speed but like a gunslinger or is ice age for example those use it so that's why it's up here but there might be some a little bit better notes down here and if you I'd rather have 15% magic damage than like a little bit of attack speed because it's not really a lot of attack speed you get out of this note here. And there's some good ones in between as well if you want to get those as well. Um, but basically you want to go through all of the magic. So yeah, this is the damage, uh, magic damage part if you can say it like that. But this is what I think at least you should be aware of these notes. That's it for the video. Click the video on screen that's coming up right now. YouTube thinks you might like it. Also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in Trove. And also hit that like button would help me out very, very much. Also consider subscribing and that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.